Hello everyone, today we're going to be analysing a classical chess game that I played last night. Each side has 80 minutes plus 10 second increment per move. So this game went on for about mm, two and a half hours I want to say. And just because of the format, it was a cup game. And because I was playing for a Division 1 side against a Division 2 side, the opposing team had a two and a half point handicap. Uh, obviously, if you win, you get a point. Draw is half a point. Loss is zero points. And it was a six versus six format. So my team had to get four and a half out of six points to win because of the two and a half point handicap, which is very difficult. And I was playing on board four. And I, I, I mean, because of the format, I have to win, right? And I play the Karo Khan. So when my opponent goes E4, I have a bit of a decision to make because the Karo is great. But it's also kind of difficult to win in the Karo. It's more of an equalizing opening, at least generally that's considered to be the case. So common logic might tell you, okay, if you need to win, maybe you should play the Sicilian, maybe you should play the French, maybe you should go for a modern. But personally, I just like to stick to what I know. And fortunately, I actually had looked over the line that my opponent played a couple of hours before the game and that was pure coincidence it was just because it was a line of the caro that i wasn't quite as familiar with as some of the others so like you know i'm very used to moves like e5 i'm very used to the exchange but knight c3 i mean it gets played a lot of course but i just hadn't looked over it in quite a while so fortunately and luckily i did and we go for this variation now again, I need to win this game. So you might be saying, okay, play something like bishop f5, kick the knight, and keep some pieces on the board. Maybe go knight bd7, something like knight f3, and then knight f6, get the exchange on f6, and play from there. Play moves like bishop to g4 maybe, e6, bishop d6. Just play normal developing moves, keep the tension in the center. The issue is... I like to just stick to what I know and what I'm comfortable with, right? So I go for knight f6, and although after the exchange, I double my pawns, we have a set of pieces come off the board very early on. You could argue it's maybe a bit easier for white to try and get a drawing type position out of this game, because that's all they need to do. Over there, six boards, the opposing team, they need two points. They need two points. That's four draws, two wins, or a win and two draws, right? That's all they need. So my opponent, I know he's trying to go for a draw. And also look at the rating disparity. I'm about 200 points higher rated than him. So he knows it's going to be a bit difficult for him to try and win. So he's going to go for a draw. However, if you check out the, the previous video of my classical game playlist, which will be linked below, my over-the-board classical game playlist, I was playing against someone over like 150 points higher rated than me. And I always fare way better against higher rated players when I just go at them. And I think that's what my opponent should have done. But what's interesting about this variation in particular is... The setup for white to try and push for an advantage is just very strange. And this next move, knight f3, you can see the eval bar drops a bit. So it goes from 0.35 in favor of white to plus, plus um, 0.19. Knight f3 is just not the move. And the, the thing is, the way that white needs to set up is c3, bishop d3, Sorry, c3, bishop d3, knight e2, queen c2, castles. And it's just an odd setup. And then the bishop comes to e3, white maybe castles queenside or kingside. It's just a very odd, like, setup for white. And it's kind of the only way to push for an advantage here. Knight f3, of course, it just looks very natural. But the problem is, this knight is heavily restricted by my f6 pawn. So although I have doubled pawns, my f6 pawn is doing a fantastic job of restricting this knight's access to the center. And the knight on f3 is way more vulnerable to pins on g4 than it would be if it was on e2, right? Because 
After bishop d6, bishop d3, castles, castles, bishop g4. This is a very standard setup for this opening, right? The bishops get on the long diagonals. The rooks probably come to the open e file. My knight comes to d7. This bishop normally goes to like e3. And this queen has to decide what to do. The pawn's probably going to come to c3. I may expand with like h6, maybe g6, f5. But the problem for white is this pin. So we go c3. I go rook e8. He goes h3. Of course, I retreat. There is absolutely no reason to take. Go back to h5. If white wants to go g4, he can. It's just very risky. You can get this cool, cool little pawn cube as well, which happens sometimes in these variations. At the end of the day, though, the dart squares are weak on the king side. Something like bishop c7, queen d6 could be an idea later on. The knight's probably going to rotate to a square like e6 to try and get into f4 to apply more pressure to the dark squares. Something you will see in this game in a roundabout way. So g g4 is just difficult to play, right? It's, it's just not a move that you really want to go for. And it's tough to know what to do here with white because the computer's top move is queen b3, looking at the b7 pawn. If black takes on f3... Queen b7, knight d7, gf3, rook c8. White is up a pawn, but has a crippled pawn structure on the king side. Black has a bit faster development. White can go pawn grabbing, but the computer thinks it is pretty dubious. The knight's probably going to get into d5 again, going after the dart squares. I can maybe go f5 to try and get my queen involved on the dart squares. And it's just very difficult for white to deal with. So queen b3 is quite an ambitious move. And even if you do go queen b3 here, I can just play queen c7. You still have the issue of this knight and where you're going to put it. Because if you retreat to like d2, you're blocking your own development. So the computer likes knight h4. Which, I mean, you're probably going to come into this f5 square. That makes the most sense, right? Something like knight d7, maybe knight f5... Bishop f8. And this position, it's interesting. But I don't know. I'm not sure which side I would rather have here. It also requires like a fair bit of forward thinking from white. And without knowing the position, it's probably quite difficult to play. So after this, uh, bishop to h5, my opponent goes queen c2. Queen c2, right? The idea is after bishop f3... You throw in this intermezzo of bishop h7, and after the king moves, gf3. So white wins a pawn. But it doesn't work. Okay, I'm very sorry about that. I hope that wasn't too loud. <laughs> the fire alarm just went off for like 10 seconds. Uh, that happens all the time. It's very annoying. Anyway, apologies. This doesn't work. And there's one move here wins for the black pieces and of course if you're going to go for this bishop takes f3 line you have to see this back here right you have to see this in this position the point is if bishop f3 bishop h7 king h8 gf3 black has pawn g6 now you might be thinking well okay the bishop's trapped but it can sack itself for two pawns and white has quite a scary looking attack. But it doesn't work because of rook g8. And it's a pin. And it's game over. If this pin didn't exist, let's give white an extra move to go king h1. Now it doesn't work. Now white would be winning. Because he has three, three pawns for a piece. Probably going to go rook G g1. Probably going to go bishop to h6. He can always give me checks like this. Go after the f6 pawn maybe. And black's pieces are kind of stranded on the queen side, right? They're not really helping in the defense of the king. But it doesn't work. You, you, you can't do this because the king is on the g file. And if you can't take the g pawn, let's say you go king h1 here, then I mean... There's several things that black can do. Computer likes queen d7 going after h3. But you could even just do something like king g7, although this isn't the most accurate idea. You could do it. You could do it. 
But my opponent sees this, right? He's he he's seventeen fifty. He's not quite as high rated as me, but he's a good player. That's a respectable rating. I also think he's a bit underrated because I couldn't really find a lot of game history from him, so it was difficult to actually know what his rating is. Anyway, GF three. I go G six. Here I was. I spent about. 10 15 minutes in this position because i'm like okay i'm better I, i'm 100 better this structure is terrible but i need to be a bit careful because i was considering king h8 initially obviously you still can't take because of this whole uh, thing same idea different move order but i just didn't really like the fact that white could do something like king h1 and rook g1 and try and go after my kingside pawns realistically i had nothing to worry about i was fine i i just tend to like with my play style i like to give my opponent nothing and you'll see that in this game you'll see that in the previous game of my classical playlist my over the board playlist again link below in the description if you want to check that my play style is very restrictive I like to keep pressure high and not allow too many tactical complications, right? Well, I say that, I'm, I end up playing a pretty tactical sequence later on in this game. It's pretty crazy, so you're going to want to stick around for it. But I go G6 because I was initially thinking of H6. Computer agrees that this isn't the right idea because after King H1... White can maybe make use of the G file and the weakness of the H6 pawn. And my light squares are just weakened as well. Because remember, I have traded off my light squared bishop. By going H6, I'm controlling the dark squares, sure. But this is the issue, right? The queen and the bishop battery is the strength of White's position. So G6 is far better. And you might be worried about moves like h4, h5, or f4, f5. But I wasn't concerned. Because f4 can always be met with f5. Right? We freeze this pawn. The queen gets into the king side. It's game over, basically. And f4 is weak anyway. This knight is going to jump through these gaps into the light squares, right? And if... Um, something like h4 is played which is a very valid move i didn't want to go h5 because of course this exists and white is completely winning and i just lose horrifically in some way probably again you do have to be careful because whilst you want to control the light squares you don't want to give your opponent opportunity for sacrifices again this battery is the strength of white's position so something like h4 I was considering the move queen a5 to control the h5 square and maybe bring my queen over to h5 to apply pressure to the pawns. That was one thing that I definitely liked the look of. The computer likes it as well. It prefers knight d7 and after h5 going f5. Okay, yeah, that makes sense as well. Because you want to get your queen in on the dark squares and if takes, you can just take move your king up, get the rook on the h file probably, and that looks pretty devastating to white. So I wasn't concerned, right? I thought, if I go g6, my pawn structure is strong, and I can just adapt to the situation. Again, this is weak. I have long-term pressure because of this damaged pawn structure. So as long as I can defuse white's position in terms of any attacking threats that he has, I think I can convert a middle game slash end game because of his structural weaknesses. My opponent goes bishop d2. I thought this was incredibly passive. I mean, if you're going to develop the bishop, why not bring it to a square like h6? It just looks more threatening, right? I was kind of confused. Or maybe um, even e3, although the computer likes f5 here and doesn't really like this idea. The point that I... Well, I think that he played bishop d2. Once I saw him play, I was like, okay, he wants to trade rooks. He wants to trade rooks with me because remember, he he wants a draw. He doesn't want to win. He just wants a draw. So I need to do something. So the computer here likes knight d7 and queen c7. That's the computer's favorite moves. It also likes f5, which I kind of wish I'd played 
to get my queen to h4, which is a very, very nice square. But the problem is, after rook a to e1, I wanted to be able to take back on e8 with a rook. Here, I would have to do this, go knight d7, and then get my queen in, but my opponent controls the e-file, so my rook can't challenge it. Therefore, I played knight d7 here. The computer likes this. Rook a to e1, and I go queen to a5. Queen c7, the computer prefers. It likes knight f8 as well, which I find a bit weird, but queen a5 is its, is its third favorite move. Here, I was trying to bait the move c4 with a discovered attack on the queen, because I just wanted to rotate to h5, and my thought process was, these pawns are weak. Because you've played c4, you've destabilized your d-pawn. If you ever try and advance, I mean, obviously h3 is hanging. So, okay, let's say king g2, let's say I waste a move, and something like d5, then my queen is always helping out in the defense of the fifth rank. And let's say, well, let's, let's say queen h4, and something like c5, then I can either trade the bishops, or I can just retreat the bishop to c7. And again, you can't play the move d5. So I'm trying to bait the move c4 by going queen to a5 because I want to transfer to the king side anyway. After the game, my opponent said he completely missed this idea of bringing the queen around like this uh, to transfer it to the king side because I, want, I wanted to do it in a way where if we have a rook exchange on e8, my rook ends up on e8. I want to trade on my terms because I know my opponent wants to trade with me because he wants to draw. My opponent chooses b4, which is inaccurate, but I mean, I just wasn't really concerned about his queenside expansion. I go queen h5, and moves like b5 are obviously not scary because h3 is hanging, but let's say king g2, let's say king g7, then something like b5. I just wasn't concerned. Like cb5, bishop b5, my queen controls that square, which... Okay, I actually missed that um, in that brief analysis. But the point is, my queen continues to help out in the defense of the fifth rank. So it's very difficult for white to try and do anything. If, let's say, king g7, c4, white tries to expand further, right? I just didn't care. I just didn't care because I thought, with this damage pawn structure, the play is on the king side. And if white, ventures too far with his, his pawns on the queen side, right? Let's say, uh, I don't know, queen h4, something like b5. I mean, d4 is hanging here, but let's say I don't take it. If we have an exchange here, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter because d5 can always be met with c5 if I want to lock everything up. And then I get the e5 square for the knight anyway. And that's kind of dangerous, right? So I, I didn't care about queenside expansion. Therefore, the move b4 didn't concern me. I move my queen over to h5. My opponent goes king g2 to defend h3. And I go f5. The computer thinks this is an inaccuracy and that I've lost my advantage because of it. The reason I went f5 is because I took a look at my position, right? And I was like, okay, my bishop's great. My queen is great. My rook's... I mean, they can't do a whole lot because they're being negated by my opponent's rooks, right? So bang, 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 bang. Pieces are doing their jobs. What's this knight doing? Nothing. It's restricted by my opponent's pawn. Therefore, the computer wants to play knight f8. I did consider this idea, possibly rotating through e6, but I why did I reject this idea? Why did I reject this idea? I can't remember. It might have... No, it wasn't b5. I don't know. Oh, no, I know why. Because my plan was to access f4, right? Now, you can do this through knight f8, knight e6, and knight f4. But I thought it made more sense to play f5, go knight f6, into d5, into f4. To me, that made more sense because if f4 was ever played, I wanted access to the e4 square with the knight. Whereas if I was coming from e6, then I wouldn't have access to e4. Whereas if I went through f6, 
to get to d5 if i couldn't go to d5 for whatever reason then i could access e4 if f4 was played i mean whether that was the correct evaluation or not computer doesn't think so but that was my reasoning behind it and i mean f5 is just a nice move to control some more squares anyway because my opponent has obviously lost his knight on f3 so the f6 pawn no longer needs to restrict the knight's movement because it's gone maybe i could have handled that better but i, I liked it here my opponent goes rook e8 rook e8 and he finds the best move in this position which when i saw it i was like whoa fair play that was a really nice find um I'd encourage you to pause the position here and really try and think through. I'm actually going to show you it from the white side. Really try and think through what white can do here positionally. Think about this positionally. What is white's best asset and how can he kind of improve that asset? Pause the video. Try and find the move. It's, it's quite nice. Okay. Well, it's, it's nothing spectacular, but it's queen c1. Now, the reason the computer likes this move, and the reason that when it was played, I was like, oh, okay, that's a good move, is I have put all my pawns on light squares, right? My One of my big, biggest assets is this bishop. So my opponent is controlling these dark squares with his queen because the light squares are not bearing any fruit. And if he goes bishop to f4, let's say I go a6, bishop f4, so I mean, like, takes, takes. White has a decent enough position considering his pawn structure's ruined. He's okay. But after queen c1, I realized bishop f4 had to be the idea because, of course, my opponent wants to trade with me. I can't go queen h4 to control this square because of bishop g5. I'll just get kicked back and then the bishop can go to f4 if he wants anyway. So that doesn't work. I have no other way to control the f4 square. But what I can do is go knight to f6. Now, I was really happy with this idea because I realized bishop f4 is a blunder. You cannot play bishop f4. And if you can't play bishop f4, these pieces are useless. They're not doing anything. And... If you go c4 to try and stop my knight from coming to d5, which, like I said, was the idea, you weaken your fourth rank. And these pawns become quite vulnerable, right? They're going to overextend at some point. Let's say after knight f6, you go rook e1 to try and trade. This was probably a more pragmatic approach to the position. But after something like queen h4, again, controlling the fifth rank, I noticed... White has no entry squares with the queen on the E file because I do a good job of controlling everything. And if I get the move knight to D5 in, queen H4 helps facilitate that because it attacks the D4 square, making it difficult for white to go C4 to stop me. But also I get way more control over F4. So let's say white goes something like A3, knight D5, and something like A4 then okay i probably have to set it up a little bit but then i can play something like bishop f4 or knight to f4 and things look pretty scary for white but i thought that he just had no play i'm again my play style is very restrictive i want to restrict my opponent's play i don't want to give him anything and i want to continue to build on my positional advantage to then allow something tactical to happen to win me the game right that's how most of my games go well, the games that I win. But my opponent chooses bishop f4. This is losing. It's just losing. And I'd encourage you to find the sequence that wins the game. Not outright, not immediately, but it creates an incredibly strong advantage for the black pieces. So try and find the idea. Move is just bishop f4. Queen f4. Knight d5. Again, this was the whole idea. This is just a double attack. It's a double attack. The only way for white to defend his c3 pawn and save his queen is queen d2. This doesn't work. It's not good enough. This is what he played because if you go something like queen to g3, the idea being to try and maintain control of the f4 square to stop my knight getting in, 
I mean, I can just take on c3 and be up a clean pawn. The computer likes queen h6 trying to go knight to f4 as well, which looks like quite a nice move. So bishop c4. You can also go pawn f4. It's something like queen g4, f5. The queen is just getting trapped, which is kind of hilarious. If queen h2, queen g5, king h1, knight c3, rook g1, queen h4, maybe queen h5. This is just horrific because, again, white is so constricted in this position. The point is that these pawns are just so weak. And the king is weak by proxy. My opponent chooses queen to d2. And I missed the best move here, which was g5. Just trying to support knight to f4 with lots of threats in the position, right? I thought this was a bit unnecessary because I didn't see the need to weaken my pawns like this. I mean, bishop f5 is not playable because... Wait, why isn't it playable? Oh, because I just win f3 and then you're going to get mated. And if king h2, queen f3, rook g1, I have rook e2. Okay. I didn't really see this line. Um, I thought that allowing the bishop to f5 to defend h3 meant that my attack didn't work. So that's why I didn't play g5. I instead went queen to h4, which is the second best move. I just creep in a little further. And I defend the f4 square. So knight f4 is going to happen. I maintain my pressure on h3. And it's difficult for white to defend himself. His only move is rook to h1. Defending h3. And here I spent a decade. I spent so long. I spent like half an hour. Trying to figure out what to do. Because I know that I'm winning. I know I am. The material is equal. But oh my god look at these pieces. They're horrific. Mine... A start, they're going to converge somehow, but I need to figure out how to do it. Computer's favorite move is b5. I mean, never going to play that ever. Uh, or a6, which again, never going to play that. Second favorite move is knight f4. But after king f1, I couldn't figure out what to do. Again, the computer wants b5, which is just ridiculous. I did consider the move queen g5, which is the second favorite move. But after rook g1, black can only go back. And again, there's nothing because that's just a repetition. And I'm just not going to find these ideas. The computer basically just wants to continue to improve the white position. Sorry, the black position. And white can't move very easily because if this bishop moves, then rook e2 happens. This rook can't really move because of h3. And let's say... You know, white just shuffles his rook up and down. Then the computer just wants to keep improving the position slowly. I don't know what the knockout is, though. Because I'm playing the top engine moves here. It, 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 it can't find a way through. Oh, no, that's sorry. Wrong, wrong move, wrong move. It wants knight d5... And then queen f4. So it wants to trade the queens. But instead of going knight f4 in this position, I just went queen f4. Computer calls it an inaccuracy because it wants to make these improving moves first. But humans don't play like that. I don't want to allow my opponent anything here. And I was very happy with this move because obviously white can't take because he's going to lose a bishop. Right? So he, he can't take. His queen is under attack. The best idea is rook d1. And you can just give the queen, like basically exchange the queens, lose the c3 pawn, and somehow try and hold on to this endgame. There's no way. There's no way white holds on to this endgame. It's horrific. His pawns are so weak. Um, I'm probably just going to hunt the d4 pawn. My king is so safe. The bishop is blunted by all my pawns on light squares. And my knight is just going to dance around the position. This is incredibly winning. It's only one pawn up. But the difference in pawn structure is everything here. And the fact that bishop isn't very effective. So I didn't think my opponent was going to play rook d1. Because, like, it's sad. It's really sad. So, what else can you do? Well, you have to move the queen. Right? You've got to move the queen. But you have to be careful. 
let's say queen b2. Then I have ideas like queen g5. If king h2, I have ideas like knight to f4, attacking the bishop, threatening mate, something like bishop f1. Well, I have rook e2. That is gorgeous. And you can't do this because of mate. But the queen can't really go to b2, right? So, because the bishop is just weak, right? That's the point. So, I considered my opponent could go queen to c1. That was an idea, but of course, takes, takes, and knight f4 wins the bishop. So, he played the move I expected, queen c2. This is what I thought he was going to play. And when I saw this on the board, I was like, oh my god, no way. Because back in this position, I had calculated queen f4, queen c2, and the one of the most beautiful moves I've played over the board, but for so many reasons. Try and find the move. I'll give you a few seconds. Pause the video. This is, this is nice. The move is rookie free. Like, it's just so, so nice. It's such a nice move. Because you, white can't take because of knight e3 and I win the queen and it's just game over. Yeah, like, you can't do this. I'm going to win absolutely everything. It's game over. But it's so nice because I'm not just absent-mindedly putting a rook on e3 where I'm just hoping my opponent takes me. It comes with way more threats. F3 is under attack. The bishop is under attack. And I have x-ray vision on the c3 pawn. If the c3 pawn falls, b4 falls, d4 falls. This is bad. This is really, really bad for white. And white has a couple of options here. Queen d1 is one option. And against this, I was going to play knight c3. If fe3, going, oh, if you take my queen, I'll take your queen. Queen g5 check, king f2, take the queen, rook takes. And I have a queen for, like a queen and a pawn for a rook and a bishop. This is completely winning. Completely winning. So queen d1 doesn't work. Uh, defend, queen d1 with the idea to defend f3, right? Queen c1 obviously doesn't work because of queen f3 and then I just take the bishop and it's game over. So he plays the only move to try and continue the game, which is bishop e2. Defending f3. But I decided here, let's just keep things simple. Let's take on c3. We're up one pawn. Queen moves. Let's take on d4. We're up two pawns. Rook d1. Let's take on b4. We're up three pawns. Attacks do not have to finish in checkmate. Attacks can finish when it, with um, a major gain of material. That's exactly what we did. Rook e3 is a beautiful attacking idea, but bishop e2 diffuses the attack. But what it also does is takes the bishop away from the queen side, which means I just gobble the queen side up. Right? We take one pawn. We take two pawns. And by the way, this is an idea. Right? Knight f4 still exists. So white needs to be careful. Rook d1. Take on b4. My opponent, of course, tries to keep the queen on the board because... He wants to try and fight on. I go queen back to h4, which I was very happy with. In this position, I, I spent like another 5-10 minutes, and I was getting kind of low on time. But in my head, I was like, I only have to navigate the next 5-ish five, five moves accurately, and then it's game over. So I might as well invest the time now. Because if, let's say, the queen, the knight, the queen, and the bishop come off the board... It's the easiest conversion of my life. I just need to facilitate that. I don't want to do it haphazardly because my pieces are a little bit strangely like placed right now. Win h4, I loved. Because let's go back to this position. The queen and the knight are in exactly the same configuration as they are in this position. They're doing the same thing. They're threatening h3. They're trying to make something happen on f4, checking the king and putting pressure on the bishop. Bishop's moved to e2, but it's still pressure. The difference is I have pressure on f3 now, but 
at the end of the day, it's the same position, but I'm just up three pawns, right? The rook has to go back to h1, not to get mated. And what I really like about the move queen h4 is that I defend d8. So there is no idea of any perpetuals of any kind, because my queen not only performs her offensive duties of attacking h3 and defending f4 to allow knight to f4, but also defends d8, a crucial idea. Because if you allow queen d8, let's say, um, oh, I don't know, uh, knight f4, king g1, and you do something silly like, I don't know, queen a5, queen d8, oh no, the queen defends d8, <laughs> let's say queen a3, of course the knight is hanging, but let's forget about that, something like queen d8, king g7, queen can come back to f8, but you get my point, I don't want to allow any kind of perpetual, right? Let's just say this was a perpetual. I don't want to allow it. And I don't want to have to play moves like f6. Because that's incredibly weakening, right? So, terrible um, example over. You get my reasoning. I want to stop the queen from coming to d8. If for some I'll happily break the queen. Rook h1. We get the rook out of the game. We force the rook out of the game. Knight f4. King f1. And we just take on e2 because the knight defends the rook. The queen stops queen d8. And you can't take back with the king because of queen c4. The queen has to go back to e1 or to d1. But d1, rook d3 wins a queen. And e1, rook c1 wins a queen. So what you have to do is take back with the queen. And here, I was like, initially, I was a bit unsure because I saw this variation back after queen h4. I saw this and I was like, okay, rook c1, king g2, takes, takes, check here. I'm up four pawns, but I don't like this endgame, to be honest. I'm like queen h4, queen e8, king g7. But this queen is just quite annoying. And it's going to take some time to convert this because of the queen's activity. So, what I saw though, which made me go for this variation, was the very simple queen c4. Yeah, I would love to win this pawn, but at the end of the day, it's kind of irrelevant. Here, I just pin the queen to the king. And why? I, I'm also threatening rook c1, which would win the queen. So white has to trade with me. And then I just go after the A-pawn. If white goes rook to A1 to defend, I mean, that's so miserable. I can just start pushing pawns. It's game over. I'm up three pawns, right? And this one is very passed. And the A-pawn is very weak. This rook is very inactive. My opponent went rook D1, gave up the A-pawn. And I mean, I just consolidated my queenside pawns try to push them forwards. My opponent tried to create something on the king side, but I just wasn't concerned. He gets his king into g5. And yeah, maybe he's got ideas like h6 if I do this. I mean, nothing will ever come of it, but I just don't really want to allow it because like, I don't know, moves like king f6, <clears throat> they're just annoying. Why would I want to give my opponent anything like this? Right, winning h7 is somehow promoting. There's no need to do that. So I go h6, kick the king out, rook a2, not only trying to access the h2 square potentially, but supporting a c2 push, hg6, king g6, rook c6, king g7, rook c5. By the way, I set a trap here. You can't play king h5 going after h6 because of mate. So rook c5, I don't care about the f5 pawn. We push. King h5, and here to finish the game off, find the most accurate move to end the game immediately. It's just queening. It's just queening. You can't take the queen because of mate, right? The king is boxed in by these pawns. Well, these pawns, and then obviously you're checkmated down the h file. And if you don't take my queen and get your king out, then I either just mate you or I just take your rook. So. Yeah, very, 
very high accuracy game. 94.6 for myself, 86.6 for my opponent. A brilliant move in there with Rook to E6. I was very happy with this game. Unfortunately, the team overall, I think we got uh, three wins and a draw, but which would be enough to win normally. But because of our opposing team's handicap, they like won because of the division difference, which means we are supposed to have to score way more than the normal three and a half out of six, just to make it a bit more competitive, which is a good rule, to be fair. I am a fan of the rule. So I win. The team loses, unfortunately, but very nice game. I was ecstatic with this rookie six move. Sorry, rookie three move. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Please leave some thoughts below on what you thought of this. If you haven't seen my previous classical game that I actually played a couple days ago against a player who is going to be a grandmaster in the future, like I give it a 70-30 chance in favor, check the video that is going to pop up on this side of the screen right now because it's a banger. Thank you very much for watching.